she's your friend. She's my friend. She is an amazing friend. Let's talk about Firestar today. Welcome to Superhero Deep Dive. I am your host, Jason, and I've got a fun episode for you. Uh, before I get started, I have to give my general disclaimers because if I don't, trolls on the internet will find me. So, um, the information pulled today is pulled from different sources across the internet and may not be completely complete, but they do give a really good insight on the current superhero. Um, the reason I say this is because there are storylines that I will skip over. There are pl like plot elements that I will skip over. And there just may be information that you know that I could not find. Um, you know, and that's okay. But the stuff that I skip over is usually because it doesn't add or take away too much from the character. Um, so it's not considered like the meat of it. And I try to keep the episodes pretty concise. Uh, you know, 30 minutes or less, try to treat it like a, like a delivery pizza, pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get into it. Firestar is awesome. Um, she is a superhero. I've pretty much known all my life through Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And I'm so glad that they transitioned her to the comic books. And she has kind of come in and out. And she stands on her own. So I think it's awesome. Um, let's get into her. Her real name is Angelica Jones. Um, after her grandmother's death by a heart failure. Uh, and her revelation that she was a mutant. Her father sent... Angelica to the Massachusetts Academy. That's where Emma Frost trains all of her recruits. Um, and this was before Emma Frost became part of the X-Men. You know, she was a big baddie in the Hellfire Club. So the Hellfire Club's original white queen, Emma Frost, began, tra began training Angelica in the use of her powers for the Hellfire Club's team of young mutants. She was never sent on field missions with the other Hellions. However... Because of her lack of control over her lethal powers, and because the White Queen wished to instill cruelty and callousness on Firestar's personality, so she tried to make Firestar kind of be like a bitch, basically. And befriending other young mutants would work against that goal. So, you know, the White Queen, Emma Frost is always known for being kind of manipulative, even as a good guy now. Like, so... You know, it's not hard to understand. Um, the White Queen manipulated Angelica into perceiving Frost as a loving mother figure, unaware that Frost was secretly, secretly grooming her to be a potential assassin and bodyguard. So that's that's just like the beginning of her history. Um, I like the fact that they kind of they kind of start her out with this complex. Thing, because I mean, she started out as a mutant, which is just very basic. But they turned her, they tried to manipulate her, so she was a sweet, loving girl, and they immediately give her this backstory of trying to be, of, of trying to be manipulated to be bad. Um, she also joined the New Mutants briefly after leaving the Hellions. Uh, she, um, but that didn't last long. She also joined the. You know what? I think I typed that in wrong. I don't think she joined the New Mutants. She joined the New Warriors after leaving the Hellions. I think I typed that in wrong. And I'm sorry for that. Um, she formed a relationship with Marvel Boy or Justice. Um, his real name is Vance Astrovic. He, he's got a cool character. I'm going to I'm gonna end up covering him um, probably sometime next month. And I'm just going to make my way through the New Warriors <laughs> apparently. Because they, in the 90s, they were my favorite team. So, I'm sorry for covering them first. But, um, she became engaged to him. Um, her and Justice later joined the Avengers. And it was funny because she came in and she always had this costume. It was like this, um, yellow bodysuit with, like, red boots, red gloves, and a red mask. But it was just a plain yellow bodysuit. Um, you know... They covered everything. When she joined the Avengers, they tried to give them new outfits or new costumes. And she rejected the one that the Wasp designed. And the Wasp is a fashion designer. So, 
She rejected it because it showed too much cleavage. She wanted to be a li little bit more conservative, a little bit more reserved and modest um, and demure. So I always thought that was kind of cool because it played right into the fact that Emma Frost wanted to kind of corrupt her and turn her into um, someone that's mean and callous as opposed to innocent. So I, I thought that was a really nice touch um, that they did that. Uh, now, after the Avengers... Angelica started college and enjoyed a normal life for the most part. Um, she abandoned wedding preparations, leaving um, Vance with all the responsibility. And when Vance, um, who was Justice or Marvel Boy, when he confronted her about this, she confessed that she needed more life experience before settling into married life. Um, Vance left in anger and that kind of ended their engagement. Um, it didn't necessarily officially end. I don't think it it ever really in the comics officially ended, but it's just been presumed that it's been ended because they they do their own things now. But um, yeah, like she's she's been kind of crazy. Like when she was in the New Warriors with with um, Marvel Boy or Justice. Uh, Justice ended up getting himself arrested because he, he defended himself against his father, but um, his father ended up dying as a result. So they were they were taking him to prison, and the other new warriors tried to bust him out um, and intercept it. Uh, Justice ended up kind of stopping everyone, even his own teammates, um, because he believed in the, he believes in the system. So he's like, you know, I did this whether I meant to or not, whether my father was abusing me or not. You know, I, I still did this, so he's got to do the time. And I can respect that. I, I may not necessarily agree with it all the time, but I I, I can respect it. Um, so she, and they were engaged at the time, she wanted to um, kind of like, I guess, consummate their relationship before he went to jail and he turned her down because he knew that she was innocent and he was innocent too. And he's like, you know, not till we're married. Um, so I thought that was really cool. It's just kind of one of those things you don't see that in society nowadays. You just don't, you just don't see it anywhere. So, um, it was, it was interesting, but they, but they broke off their engagement. Um, she had some adventures after that. She was diagnosed with cancer um, but she went through treatments with the support of Black Cat, Hellcat, and Photon. And that was in the, uh, I believe, the Marvel Divas series. So, um, where they addressed that. Um, so, you know, she's she's got a lot. And, and this will all come into play. Like, her history, I haven't even touched on her powers yet. So... Um, this is all going to kind of come full circle. So it's it's really interesting. She's a very interesting character. Um, Firestar joined the X-Men as a new teacher in the Jean Grey school. And she was assigned to teaching physics. Um, at one point, she was actually dragged to hell with the other members of the X-Men. Um, because she was pulled into a quest to search for the deceased Nightcrawler. <clears throat> When she was in hell, at one point she actually set hell itself on fire to stop a wave of demons attacking her and Iceman. Um, it definitely impressed Nightcrawler. And later on, after returning to Earth, Firestar and Iceman encountered Spider-Man. Because you have to. You have to give a throwback to the um, old cartoon, right? <laughs> so, so she is actually... Um, She's seen in X Men comics here and there, and be, I mean, well, she is a mutant, and she's helping other mutants, so this is good. Um, now, I'm going to get into the powers and relationships and stuff. Um, before I do, I just want to give a quick shout out. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, um, requests, critiques, anything like that, please, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can you can reach me on Twitter at B the number four it all one and use the hashtag superhero deep dive 
or you can email me directly at be the number four it all at yahoo.com. Um, of course, this airs every Tuesday, and I mean, yeah, every Tuesday. And um, if you aren't doing anything on Tuesday evenings at about 8 30 p.m. Central Time, get on Twitch and look up the TN. Um, TN2M Shows Twitch stream, they do a Friends with Benefits podcast live every Tuesday um, at 8.30 p.m. Central Eastern Time, I'm sorry, and it lasts about an hour. Um, they have contests and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, let's get into more stuff with Firestar. Okay, Powers. Um... Firestar can actually control microwave radiation. Um, this gives her flight powers, heat blast, um, and the microwave radiation actually disrupts electromagnetic waves. So, um, you know, she can mess up stuff like that. She can mess up some of those instruments that, you know, they may be searching for um, people or, you know, missile guidance, stuff like that. Um, so it's really cool. She's mostly immune to her powers, except her microwaves at one point started to make her infertile. So she couldn't have babies. Um, this was cured by Henry Pym or Ant-Man. Um, the radiation also started to give her breast cancer, but it's currently in remission. Um, they haven't really touched on it too much that I've seen lately. Um, but that was kind of a big thing. You know, where her powers were literally um, starting to kill her. And, you know, that, that really sucked. Um, Hank Pym made something, like, kind of interwoven in her, in her costume to help absorb the microwave radiation and disperse it to where it wouldn't, it wouldn't harm her. And her body started getting adjusted to it and... Um, you know, it, it should be fine now, but that's just, that's just kind of scary, you know? Like, I mean, what do you do at that point? Uh, so, yeah, but those are her powers. She can fly, um, in the cartoons, if you, if you remember, it always looked like she had this kind of like, kind of like glowing aura around her, and that's basically the microwaves. Um, so relationships. Okay, in Spider-Man and his amazing friends... She actually dated both Iceman and Spider-Man briefly. Um, in an episode, she even dated the Japanese mutant Sunfire. So, you know, she... That was, that was quite interesting, right? Um, in the comics, she originally had a crush on Cannonball from the New Mutants. And she was also engaged to Justice and Marvel Boy. Uh, I don't know if she's in any current relationships. Um, but she's... Ever since, uh, ever since like Marvel Divas, she kind of's been standing on her own. Um, so yeah. And fun facts, fun facts about Firestar. She actually started out in Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends because originally they wanted to use the Human Torch, um, but they also wanted to add diversity in the or in the um, cartoon. So they made they made it female, and they they experienced this in the eighties with the Fantastic Four cartoon as well. That's why they made um, Herbie the robot as one of the members instead of the Human Torch. They didn't want to risk kids setting themselves on fire, so they made her have microwave powers. That way, it covers fire, ice, and then Spider Man because <laughs> that fits in that scheme, right? Um, She's also named after one of her creator's ex-girlfriends. So Angelica Jones was based on the creator's ex-girlfriends. And that, that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Um, I don't know how bad the breakup was, but apparently he wasn't over her, right? <laughs> Firestar um, also appears in Wolverine and the X-Men um, and the Superhero Squad show. She was an extra character in the video game Maximum Carnage, which was one of my favorite games back in the day. 
Um, she was in Ultimate Alliance 2 and is a playable character in Marvel Superhero Squad Online. Uh, she was also, this is funny, she was also in the 1987 live action wedding of Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. I saw this and of course I went to YouTube and I encourage you all to go to YouTube. Stan Lee marries Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. Um, but Peter Parker's dressed up as Spider-Man. So he marries Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson um, in Shea Stadium in 1987. So if you look up, um, you know, like 1987 Spider-Man Wedding Live or something, um, you don't see her in it. From the clips that I saw, it was more like news reports covering it. But... It, it's pretty awesome. Um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so go check that out. It's a, it's a hidden gem. Um, okay, and now we're gonna hit my favorite part of the show. This is power expansions. How can we make the character greater? What storylines can we put them in? And let me tell you, this one is really difficult because, you know, she, um. Because of her powers, you know, they started, they started killing her, but then they got cured. Um, so, you know, that was, that was really hard because you're like, man, that would have been perfect to write about, but they already did it. So how can we expand on this? What can we do? So I, I did some brainstorming and this is what I came up with. Um, I, I think we should borrow a little element from the Watchmen. You know, um, and, and I'm just going by the movies. I've read the comics as well, or the graphic novel as well. So, you know, I get to keep my nerd card. Um, but I'm just going with the movie because it's a visual aid that's there. And that for some reason, that scene really stuck out to me in the movie. Um, but Dr. Manhattan was accusing of giving his peers cancer, like his co-workers, his girlfriend at the time and stuff. So let's replace that with Firestar. But let's... Keep it close to her too, like, like she was always close to her father, so have him come down with cancer. Um, let Justice, who was her fiance, you know, they were really close. Um, let's have him start get some kind of cancer. Um, let the reveal be slow over like the course of like a year. You know, like people around her are starting, you know, like, and it doesn't have to be anything big. It can be like moles or something, melanoma that can get taken care of. It could be um, things that are caught early, you know, um, but, but let's have, let's have that be um, there. And then, you know, after, after about a year, you know, have it culminate with the revelation that she could actually be the source. You know, I, and you know, in this day and age, um, there could be many sources, you know, um, I think, I think cancer is one of the worst diseases out there, but, and that's because it affects so many people in so many different ways. So, um, you know, I've seen people that have smoked all their lives and, and they're fine. I've seen people that have never smoked and have just been around secondhand smoke get um, lung cancer, you know, so it's, it affects people in so many different ways. So how can you actually test to see if it's something that she's doing just as a result of her powers? I mean, we have to remember she was brought in because her powers were lethal and, and they were, you know, she couldn't control them. So, um, with that, it even got to the point where, you know, she started killing herself with it um she you know so what does she do um how would she cope if it is her you know like just think about that if you found out that you were giving the people around you your loved ones um cancer how would you cope with something like that you know she almost became infertile by her own powers she had breast cancer by her own powers and now she could be endangering the people around her by her own powers. This isn't something she can control. It's a part of her. And the cancer is a side effect. So it's not like up to her on who would and who wouldn't get it. You know, like that's not something she's controlling. 
Um, and you can't even say like, oh, well, it's such a minimal... She can lower her radiation amount to be so minimal that it doesn't affect people. How do you know? How do you know? You know, you can. we see things that over the course of time, you know, a drip of water hitting the same place over and over and over can cause a dent in rock. We see where um, if wind comes in steady beats, not as one long gust of wind, but in steady beats, it can cause a bridge to like start, um, you know, like swinging. You know, like all it takes is, is a little bit of consistency. So, so how can you, how could you handle this? You know, how would you solve it? You know, it's not necessarily something you can fight someone for. Um, do you cast that person out? Would she need to be cast out like an exiled? Would she have to live in a containment suit? Um, and if so, what about the damage that's already been done? You know, how would something like that affect her as a character in general? We have to remember, she's like, even now, even now, where she is a teacher, she's gone through stuff. Um, she's gone through the scare of never having children. She's gone through the scare of breast cancer um, and chemotherapy, you know, treatments like that. Um... How would something like that affect her? You know, would would that be the thing that makes her cold to the world? Who kn who knows? She's always been that innocent, loving woman. So, you know, where's that line? It's almost like um, you know, I can't even think like in when Joker took Commissioner Gordon hostage one time, and just tried to like break him. Because he felt that it, all it took was one bad day to, to end up like the Joker, you know. Um, so what about this, you know, like, how could this, how could this be handled? What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know. Um, you know, I think there are so many questions and so much potential in the storyline. We have someone that has fought the good fight that they have um gone through things that no one should go through multiple times you know um her mother died at a young age she was close to her dad uh she was taken and manipulated by by Emma Frost you know she was told she shouldn't have friends and stuff um she fell in love with someone and you know um regardless of what you said or what you may think she she did try to give herself to him um and he rejected her at first with it granted he had valid reasons he's like you know we're not gonna do it on the way to prison you know it's gonna be special but seriously you you get you got rejected for something like that. Um, that's a, that's that's never a tough pill to swallow. Um, you know, <laughs> you got all this stuff. You got you got people around you that are in the peak physical condition. You know, um, these guys are are solid muscle. They're they've got zero percent body fat. The women are the same, you know, they're, they're statuesque, they're beautiful, and it's because they're constantly working out. They're in the best shape of any that anyone can be in. So, you know, when you're a teenager, hormones are going crazy. Um, so, she kept herself, you know, pure for the most part. And around all that, you know, that's, that's hard to do. Um... And she has fought, and she has fought and fought and fought and fought and fought. She has done everything people have asked her to do and more. So how do you, what happens when you become the bad guy and you don't even realize it? And then when you do realize it, how do you handle that? Where do you go from there? Like I said, it's not something she can just turn off. I mean, this is part of her. 
So, it's just some things to think about. Let me know what you guys think. I would absolutely love to continue the conversations um, on it. And, yeah. Um, but that's all I've got for today. Tune in next time. We're going to have some fun. We'll cover another superhero. Um, in June, I am supposed to be interviewing a good friend of mine that owns a... Um, he just opened up a comic shop here in Roanoke, Virginia. So we'll be hand, we'll be talking to him, um, and we'll be doing a deep dive with him, and hopefully we'll have plenty more things after that. So in the meantime, guys, everyone be safe, be happy, be healthy, be blessed, be smart, and good Lord, if you're not smart, don't get caught, okay? All right, guys, everyone be good, and I'll catch you next week. See you later. Bye-bye.